a nurse and a doctor took me into a room and sat me down. And they were like, your mum, she's died. And it was like someone had punched me in the stomach. sits at the base of my throat, kind of, yeah, just under my chin. And often it is quite physical. It's almost like it's, it's burning. And it makes you want to cry or talk about it. But sometimes you don't feel like you can because there's this thing lodged in your throat. It's, it's the ache of, of exhaustion. My mum was quite ill um, with an autoimmune disease. When I became her carer, it was just a really hard time. The feelings of anger and frustration and hurt, just, they just grew and they grew and it culminated in me beginning to, to self-harm and it became another thing that I couldn't talk to anyone about. I remember feeling kind of like I was struggling for the first time when I was around 14. I wasn't really connected to anything. It was like I was walking around in this big bubble and life was going on around me, but I wasn't a part of it and I, I couldn't sense, I couldn't, I couldn't connect with anything. And I felt like I was just never gonna be happy again. I didn't really know what mental illness was, I just know that I felt awful all the time. I just felt like I was a failure. I felt like I was out of sync with the entire world and everyone else kept going and no one had noticed that I wasn't quite there anymore. It was like all of my bones had turned to lead. The worst thing is the loss of hope because depression almost teaches you that this is how it's going to be forever and that you're never going to feel good again, you're never going to feel like life is okay, you're never going to feel like you're okay again. I wanted the pain to stop and it got to the point where I took an overdose. From where I was with self-harm and depression, I was lucky enough to find people that loved me and valued me enough to show me how to do it myself, to show me that I was worth something. It's really important to tell people how you feel, even if you don't understand how you feel. Quite often I found that writing about it was the easiest way I could communicate because I'd be able to write something and then give it to my mum and be like, this is how I'm feeling. It's okay to not be okay. You don't have to have had something really horrible happen to you just to feel the way that you do. We treat ourselves much more harshly when it's our mental health that's struggling than it's our, if it's our physical self. Depression and anxiety aren't something that is my fault. They're not a fault in my character. They're an illness and you have to take care of yourself in them. I am resilient that no matter what life throws at me, I'm gonna get through it. It's okay to rely on other people if you need to that you should let people in when you can. Mental illness doesn't have to be the end of a life. It doesn't have to rule it. Even if mental illness is part of your life for a couple of months or a couple of years, or even if it's always there, life can be lived in it. <laughs>